Hello, everybody. Happy Tuesday evening. Hi, guys. Um, you guys are the early, the early bird gets the worm. I'm so impressed. I'm like, it's just now seven, seven central, and we got a full house here already. So anyway, welcome, everybody. We're going to give everybody a minute or so to get on and I think I had this set where as people were joining, they would be muted. Um, I'm just going to mute all to be safe. Um, and I know we will have Bob joining us here in a moment. And when we see his face then, or Bob, if you're on, when you join, of course you can unmute yourself, but, um, I'm excited. I feel like we normally come together on Mondays and this is throwing me off because it's Tuesday and I'm going to be seeing several of you all in 48 hours as we are headed to St. Martin. Um, so I'm so excited. It's my first trip to St. Martin and uh, I know that many of you are going to be joining us on the next trip. Um, which is going to be one heck of a cruise that I, I'm, I'm honestly so excited about the cruise because it's like a really fancy boat we're going on. Like I've done cruises with my family, but you know, we just do like normal cruises. This is like a fancy cruise. So I'm really thrilled about that. And um, we're about to have our first earner in the next day or two. So I bought a little treat for her once she earns. I'm super excited. And I see we've got our guest of honor here this evening joining us. So hi, Bob, how are you doing? I'm doing great, thanks. Welcome. Um, Bob, you and I have not had a chance to connect yet, but my name is Tish Mefford. Uh, of course, I know all, all about you. You probably don't know anything about me, but I've been in the industry for 11 years now. Um, I've been in the jewelry business for 11 years now and about 18 months partnered with Park Lane. And we are honored to have you here this evening. Um, Nance has been sharing all sorts of things about you with me. And I just, I really thank you for giving of your time this evening to spend some time with our treasure tribe. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Well, let me give just a quick intro and then I'm gonna pass it over to you if that's okay. Yeah, sounds great. Okay, awesome. So for those of you that have not or are not familiar with Bob. Um, Bob has been in the industry for, I actually don't know how many years, but I'll let him share with you how many years. He's been, he's built a multi-million dollar business in the network marketing industry. He's also taken his knowledge and his expertise and carried that into the coaching industry. And he has been coaching men and women all over the direct sales, MLM, network marketing industry for a handful of years that I know of for sure, because I've been following you for at least three years that I know of. Um, he's also got a great podcast and his coaching business is your virtual upline. So I'll let, I'm sure he'll be sharing a little bit more about his business with us this evening, but I'm going to pass it over to you and not take any more of your time. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks for that introduction, Tish. And I, I appreciate Nancy setting this up. And I, I think I heard that Scott's going to be on here too. So give Scott a little shout out there. Um, but I'm excited to be here. And I want to thank everybody that um, that's kind of been following me on my journey and uh, supporting the work that we're doing here inside of this profession. Um, tonight, I want to talk to all of you about a topic that I'm really passionate about in, you know, in my business. Um, I really focus on helping people develop themselves as leaders inside of their businesses. You know, we really, uh, the area that we specialize in is, is helping people really step into the, the belief that they can be a leader in this profession, that they, they can be successful and build the business in the life of their dreams. And what I find is, that there's a really big hurdle that we all have to face, re really regardless of what level we are in our business. And it's, our, it's that internal battle that we have to wage every day. It's, it's developing the mindset that's necessary for success. And so I wanna talk to all of you tonight about fear. And I wanna share a message that I've prepared uh, for you that is called the gift of failure. 
Some of you, if you listen to my podcast, you've probably, uh, I did an episode not too long on this topic and it was one of my most popular episodes that I've ever done. And I'm not surprised to hear that because the information that I'm going to share with you tonight, I know is something that we all have struggled with at some point in our career. And I know that it's really important uh, information because it can truly change your life. And I don't say that um, just because I believe it's true. I say it because I know it's true because it's, it's done that for me in my business. You know, I started out in this profession, uh, almost, uh, I guess I'll date myself a little bit, over 18 years ago as a distributor, fresh out of college in 2001. Um, I was introduced to the network marketing profession. And uh, I was in as a distributor. I spent over 10 years building a career in this profession. I had a little bit of a stint where I was out of the business. Um, and then over the last three years, I focused solely on building a training company. I don't have an active distributorship. I just focus on kind of serving the profession as a whole. But I've spent, I share that with you because I've spent a lot of time around this profession. And I, I've noticed that there are kind of common characteristics that successful people have. And, and what I'm going to share with you tonight is one of what I think the most important ones, which is learning how to view failure differently when it comes to your business and understand the importance that failure, the important role that failure actually plays in the development of your success. And I'd like to start off tonight by sharing just briefly a little bit about my backstory because I think it's helpful to, uh, to know this, if, especially if you're not familiar with me and the work that I do. But um, when I first started in network marketing, I really struggled. My first year was, I'll just lovingly refer to it as kind of a disaster. I wasn't able to uh, recruit a single person onto my team. Um, at the end of my first year, I had a total of two customers. One was myself. The other was my mom. Um, I'm, not, I'm not proud to admit this today, but I will say it now because I um, thankfully have evolved as a person, but um, I had to threaten my mom to become my customer by telling her I wouldn't come home for the holidays one, one year. So um, that was where I was at the end of my first year. And I just share that with you because I want to try to make some of you feel a little bit better about where you are in your business and know that uh, if I did it, then, then anything is possible. But I found myself after a year being in this business, really struggling with this idea of whether or not I had what it took to be successful. Um, you know, I think one of the reasons why the training that I um, deliver people relate to so much is I, I have a depth of understanding um, about what it means to struggle in a business like this because I did struggle for so long that I can speak very clearly to this kind of inner battle that we face because it's one that I've waged most of my life. And I'll tell you the area of my life that I struggled with the most when I first joined my business was this tremendous, literally debilitating fear that I had of public speaking. And I share that today with people and I know they, they kind of shake their head and they're like, there's no way you were afraid of speaking in public because I, I literally have built a business and, and you know, I really view kind of like my calling in my life is to uh, inspire and impact people through sharing my story and my words, but it was it, something I was afraid of most of my life. And I really struggled with this idea of having to do that inside of my business. You know, if I'm honest with you, I absolutely hated prospecting every single step of the way. Um, the idea of me having to like give presentations and uh, train people that joined my team was so frightening to me. Uh, I would say all the right things. I would say I wanted a big team and a lot of success, but I had a really I had an interesting knack, and, and if, you, if you can relate to me, just kind of shake your head here. I really had an interesting knack for self-sabotaging in that first year. Uh, anytime I would have even the slightest hint at something going right, I would find a way to screw it up pretty quickly. I was very inconsistent. It used to drive me crazy because I would sit there in a training and I'd be like, I know what I'm supposed to do right? I've heard this a thousand times. This is not rocket science, but why in the heck am I not doing it? Right? And so I had all these things that were going on and it was like, I was really my own worst enemy. And what I didn't realize at the time, and I teach this to a lot of people today, is if you struggle with inconsistency in your business, 
one of the reasons why that is, and, and, I, and I can almost guarantee you, it's because if you, if you start to peel back the layers, you'll find that you struggle with issues of worthiness. And you struggle with this idea of whether or not you are really deserving of and capable of the success that's, that you say you want. And self-sabotage comes when we start to see external results, things start to go right, but those external results don't match up with the true belief in how we feel about ourselves uh, in, you know, in, inside. And that's the reason why we self-sabotage. And you know, there's this idea that your external results will always mirror your internal beliefs and thoughts about yourself. And if you have negative thoughts that are driving you in your business every day, I can guarantee you that's gonna translate into negative results. See, most of us make the mistake, we give our power away because we believe that our external circumstances are what ultimately creates our results. And I felt victim of this because here's, this was the, the vicious cycle, that the trap I would fall into about negative thinking. I would look at my results, which were nothing after a year, I would look at this team that I didn't have and I would constantly be comparing myself to others and the thought that I had was I'm not good enough. I'm not a good leader. I'm not worthy. And how could I not think that? Because look at my results. Look how bad things were. And the mistake that a lot of us make is we're always looking to our external circumstances and our current results as evidence of the fact that we're not good enough or we're not worthy. So it supports this belief that we have. And what winds up happening is we wind up just creating more of what we don't want. Because here's one of the greatest realizations that I've had. And I'm, uh, you know, I've become obsessive uh, about studying the psychology of success because I really believe that that's where it lies. And here's one of the things that I learned that changed my life that I'd like to share with you here tonight. When you look at your current circumstances and the things that you have today, you have to understand that your current circumstances have nothing to do with your ability to create the life that you want in your future. And the mistake that we make is look at, we look at what we have today we see that as validation of the negative beliefs and thoughts we have about ourselves, and we wind up just creating more of what we don't want. Here's the life-changing realization that I had. Our current circumstances and the results that we have today are evidence of our past thoughts and beliefs about ourselves. The thoughts that you thought yesterday actually created the feelings that you had, which determined whether or not you showed up and went to work. And that over time is what created your results. And here's, the, here's where we really take our power back, is when we understand that we are not a, uh, a powerless player in this game, having to deal with whatever hand that life deals us, whatever set of cards, that circumstances don't create your results. Your thoughts about your circumstances create your results. Because if you can learn how to start to change your habits of thinking from negative to positive, consciously start to, to believe and think different things about yourself. Because here's the thing about a belief. See, we hold our beliefs to be true, but when we examine our beliefs, right, and I had this belief that I wasn't good enough, I wasn't a good leader for so long, I just accepted it as fact, it was part of who I was. But when I started to peel back the onion and shine the light on it and realize that all a belief is, is a thought that you keep thinking over and over again, and it becomes so ingrained in your identity that you do believe it's true, but it's not. See, thoughts are just interpretations. Your thought is just a way, a perspective, a way of looking at things. See, some people are in the same position that I have of not having a team, but their thought is not that they're not a good leader. Their thought is that they're still learning and growing and that they have room for improvement. See, I had what, um, you know, there's a great book called The Psychology of Success and what the author Angela Duckworth refers to as a fixed mindset. I had a fixed mindset thinking that my abilities were set in stone that I didn't have the ability to get better. The key to success is having a growth mindset. The key to success is knowing that you might not have the results you want today, but that means doesn't mean that that's going to be like that in the future. You can get better. You can change. You can acquire the skills that you want. You can change your patterns of thinking. And when my life changed is when I stopped telling myself this lie that I wasn't good enough, 
I started to develop new habits in my business. I started to change my thoughts to positive, and that started to create a different trajectory for my life. But I start off with this idea of thinking because here's what I used to do. Anytime I was in a situation where I had to face this tremendous fear I had of public speaking, I would always shy away from it. I would run away from my fears, and I would not do these things that I knew I should be doing to be successful. And when we start to examine fear, most of the fear that we experience in our business is not real fear, right? The idea of me getting in front of the room and talking to people, right? There's not like a real fear there. I'm not going to die if I give a good, a bad public speech. They're all irrational fears. They're, they're, they're an illusion. They're not real. We make them up in our head. And here's what fear is. I'll give you a different way to look at fear. All fear is is you imagining a negative outcome for an action that you haven't even yet taken. And this is what I would do over and over again. I would be faced with this idea of doing something that would scare me, reaching out to a prospect, right? And then immediately, what do we do? We we create a story because we love making up stories. That's all we do. Our whole life is just a big story. And I would have this thought, oh, I should reach out to Sally. I haven't spoken to her in a couple of years. She'd be a great prospect. But then immediately, what do we do? We imagine every single scenario of how that's going to go miserably wrong. Oh, she's, gonna, she's not going to answer me. She's going to be offended. She's not going to be interested. She's going to say no. She's going to think I'm stupid. She's going to do this. Right? We, all, we imagine all the ways it's going to go wrong. And then what happens? We do nothing. Well, I would, be, you know, I would be presented with an opportunity to speak in front of the room. And I'd be like, you're crazy. I'm not doing it right? Because I'm going to make a fool of myself. I'm not going to know what to say. People are going to laugh at me. They're going to look at me funny, right? All these negative scenarios. And this is what we do all day, every day in our business. And this is what keeps us stuck. See, here's the key. You have to start looking at this differently because a lot of people will tell you that the goal is to eliminate your fear. And I will tell you that and, and I, I'm going to assume that you all are human beings, that if you're a human being, it is impossible to eliminate fear. There's nothing wrong with fear, right? Fear is just an emotional response to something that you're facing in your life and in your business. And what I will promise you is this. If you are the type of person that is always pushing yourself to grow and go to that next level of your life, fear will always be a constant companion along your journey. If you're somebody that's driven by purpose and a deeper sense of meaning in your business and in your life, that you have goals and aspirations to do something special with your life, fear is actually the guidepost that leads you down the path of your purpose. Fear will tell you which things that you need to do in order to continue to grow and evolve. And, but here's, what, here's the goal, not to eliminate our fear. It's to make a really important shift, and it's to build your faith. Faith is a very important component in the achievement of your dreams. Faith, when I look back at my life and the things that have made me successful, faith is one of the common denominators in everything that has ever gone right for me in my business. And I'm going to tell you what faith is. In my mind, in the context of this discussion, fear is imagining a negative um, outcome to something that you haven't done. And faith is imagining a positive outcome. See, faith is being grounded in this idea that there is something bigger than just you at play in your business that is working behind the scenes. See, faith is having the idea that if we can just move forward with purpose and intention and be willing to take the action, even when we're afraid to have the courage to do so, that things will work out in our favor. And what I was lacking in my business for that first year was faith. And one of the things that I've learned, and this is one of the areas that I teach, and this is also, quite frankly, one of the things that I teach that I realize makes me much different than a lot of other people that teach and train in this profession. And, um, and you know, before I share this with you, I just, I always feel like I need to give a disclaimer, but it is what it is. Um, I am by no means trying to impose my beliefs on you, but I'm going to share them with you because I'm here because maybe some of you can relate to this. 
when I look back at my life in those early years and when I was going through all that struggle and adversity and challenge and I wanted to quit and I questioned myself every single day, what I know with absolute certainty now looking back was that I was being prepared for something greater in my life. And you see, I believe this. I believe that God gives us not what we want, but gives us what we need. And I don't know what your belief system is, but I just want you to understand that whatever you believe, you need to understand that there is a higher power at play here right now in your business and in your life, directing your steps. It is not an accident that you said yes to this profession. It is not an accident that you are in this company. There is not an accident that you are on this Zoom right now. You need to understand one thing loud and clear. You are not broken. You have everything inside of you that you need to build the business and the life of your dreams. You just have to start playing the game. When I look back, all those difficult and challenging times, they were making me the person that I needed to become to deserve my dreams, to be the person that I am today. And I look, I get it. I know how bad it hurts, right? When you feel stuck. And you know that there's something bigger out there. You're feeling called to something so much more. And, and, and it just feels so far away. But I'm going to tell you the reason why you feel stuck is really, really simple. And it's important to understand this. Stuck is a sign. Stuck is your soul's way of reminding you that you've stopped growing. Just like when you, your body, when you need food, there's a biological function of hunger, right? Sometimes I find myself, I'll be so engulfed in my work, I'll forget to eat. And then my stomach starts grumbling and it's my body saying, hey man, eat, we need nourishment. Or if I don't drink enough water, I feel thirsty. Well, stuck is a spiritual function. It is a sign. It is a, a gentle nudge pushing you in the direction that you need to go. So we need to stop looking at stuck as a bad thing. We need to start looking at it as a good thing, as something that's propelling us forward. But we have to understand, how do we grow? How do we grow and become more? How do we get unstuck? And here's where failure comes in. See, most of us have this belief that we establish over time, that failure is a bad thing. That failure means that we're either not doing it right or that failure means that we're not good enough, right? What failure, what fear of failure, a lot of people will say, you know, I'm just afraid of failing. It's not necessarily that they're afraid of someone saying no. They're afraid of that because we wind up attaching our own self-worth to whether someone says yes or no. We look outside of ourselves for validation of that worthiness. This is the society that we live in today that's been created by fearful thinking and, quite frankly, social media. Social media is the best and the worst thing that's ever happened to this profession. It's the best thing if you know how to use it. It's the worst thing if you find yourself falling into the trap of comparing yourself to others right? And looking at what they have and what you're not, it winds up feeding this mindset of scarcity that a lot of us have, which is that we're not enough. And we start from this place of not being enough. We think if we can just go out and work hard enough and achieve that rank or make that money or get that sale that will eventually feel enough only to, uh, to figure out that that's not the way that it works. There's no amount of money in the world that will ever make you feel more worthy than you are right now in this moment. As a matter of fact, you will never in your life be more worthy of the things that you want than you are right now at in this moment. And you need to start from that place because if we can start from a place of knowing that there's something more powerful inside of us, then we don't need the yeses or the noes for that validation and it allows us to move forward with courage taking action. But here's the belief that I want you to adopt. Because remember what I said earlier, all a belief is, it's just a thought that you keep thinking over time. A belief is a thought with absolute certainty about what you think something means. And here's what winds up happening. Our beliefs literally shape 
our perception of reality. Like if you really dig deep into this, here's what you realize. Every single thing in your life is a belief. Everything in your life is just your perception and interpretation of how things go. And what we do is I, I use the analogy. We have these core beliefs that we form over our life. And it's the, it's like, if you're wearing a pair of glasses that have red lenses on them. I promise you the only thing you will see the world at is, is red. And if you have a belief that you're not good enough and that you're not worthy, everything you see in your life will just be proof of that belief. But if we start challenging these beliefs, if we start saying, hey, maybe I can start thinking a different thought, over time, maybe I can start shaping the way that I perceive life, that's how we change. Here's the belief I want you to adopt. That success and failure are not different paths. Success and failure are on the same path. The only way that you will succeed is to literally fail every single day. Now, intuitively, right, we know that, but we don't truly know it because we don't act on it. See, the only difference between successful people and failures is successful people build their success on top of a pile of failures. Failures are buried by their failures. Failures attach themselves to the no. Failures, that means they're not good enough and that paralyzes them. And that's what happened to me. I was just stuck in this vicious cycle. But here's the belief I want you to take is that when you take action, one of two things happens. You either get the result that you want, which comes from the yeses, or you get the lesson that you need, which only comes from the nose. So here's another way to say this. The yeses build your business and the nose build you. And I will tell you this, and I'm sure, you know, Tish is shaking her head right now. So she knows this. She's been in this game a long time. I used to hear my mentor say this when I was broke and didn't have a person on my team and it sounded nice in the beginning and I was like, yeah, that, that sounds cool. But after a while, I got kind of sick of hearing it because I wasn't seeing the results, but I'm going to say it to you right now and you can shake your head at me if you want, but I'm going to just tell you and someday I pray and hope that you find out. The person that you become in the pursuit of building your business and chasing your dreams is by far the greatest gift you'll ever be given by this profession. And here's where I want to kind of call some of you out. Some of you are not showing appreciation for the process. See, I was the same person that after that first year, if you would have asked me, hey, how are things going? I would have told you terrible. And I would have been like, there's nothing going right. I don't look at my results. I don't have a team. I had to basically you know, convince, lie to my mom to get her to sign up. Like I was only focused on what wasn't happening. But at the same time, if you then would have said, well, Bob, why don't you talk to me a little bit about the person that you're becoming? Talk to me a little bit about your own growth as a person. I would have lit up and said, well, I'm not even the same person. Are you kidding me? And I bet a lot of you, you might not have the results that you want, but if you're honest with yourself, the person you are today is so much different than the person that you were when you signed up. And what I want to challenge you to do is why not show some appreciation and gratitude for the process and the journey and who you're becoming? Because sometimes when we can show appreciation and when we not focus on what we don't have and what we do have, what we want grows in, uh, starts getting attracted to us and we become more. And that's what winds up happening, right? But think of it like this. The no's are really where it's at because the yeses are great. Don't get me wrong. We have to get the yeses. I mean, eventually somebody's got to say yes. But here's the thing about the yeses. We learn very little through success. We grow very little through success. We do not build character through success. It is easy to lead and be happy when things are going well. You wanna know the true test of a leader? You wanna know when you really see their stripes? Look at the way that they lead themselves and the way they lead others when things are not going well. See, during times of challenge and adversity, that's when character is built. That's when the real leaders show up. 
but that's also when you grow. See, if you can learn how to adopt a more healthy attitude towards failure, not attaching yourself to the result, but saying failure is an opportunity for me to learn and grow. The wisdom that you gain on the other side of failure is ultimately what makes you the person that you need to become to deserve the success that you want. You do not pursue success. You deserve it. And I'll tell you, I got clued in on this the very first time that I ever spoke in public in my business. It was just over a year into my journey. And I was, I already painted the picture. You get where I was. And I showed up to a meeting. We used to do Saturday morning meetings uh, down at the Philadelphia airports where I'm from the Ramada Inn. Every Saturday, we used to have trainings. And I would drive 45 minutes to the, to the airport, go to the hotel, week after week, no guests, just me, sit in there and hear the same talk over and over again. And I was at the point in my business, if I'm honest, where I really was ready to give up. And I showed up and I truly believe, once again, things happen for a reason, right? There's something bigger at play. I showed up to a Saturday morning meeting. I'll never forget it. I still remember it like it's yesterday. And this was a meeting that what, without me knowing at the time was going to alter the trajectory of the rest of my life. I showed up and just before the meeting was going to start, my mentor and, and my friend, his name was Mike, he grabbed my arm before I could sit down and he said, hey, we want you to open the meeting up today. And if any of you have ever been in this position before, maybe it wasn't a meeting, but maybe somebody asked you to speak in the Facebook group and go live or do something, share your story, you'll know what that feels like. My heart sank. It felt like it was beating out of my chest. I got immediate tunnel vision. I didn't even have a chance to say no, because as soon as he said it, he was pushing me gently to the front of the room. And, you know, there was no more than maybe 20 people in the room. So we're not talking like this is not like a huge crowd by any means. And it was probably no more than a 15 foot walk to the front of this small room in the hotel. But I vividly remember as I was walking to the front of the room and I'm frantically in my mind trying to rehearse what I'm going to say as I get up there, I have this feeling that comes over my body that I had never felt before in my life, this terrible feeling. And the only thing, the only way I can describe it is it felt as though my, my organs were shutting down. And I can remember thinking to myself, this has, as I'm shaking, this has to be what it feels like right before you die. I mean, it was that bad. And some of you know what I'm talking about here. And I got in front of that room and I, and I, you know, I do not have a success story to share with you here because it was an absolute disaster. I had a glass of water in my hands and I was literally shaking so bad. I was spilling the water on my hand and my friend Mike is standing in the back of the room motioning to me, put the water down and I put it down and for the life of me, I don't know what I said. I sat down, I was mortified. I, when the meeting was over, I got up and I was trying to beeline out of that room. I couldn't get out of there fast enough. And I was just determined I was never gonna come back. How can you rebound from something like this? And before I could get out of the room, people started grabbing me. And if you could guess what they started saying to me, because you've probably seen this or had this happen to you before, they grabbed me and they said, oh, you did such a great job, right? Person after person, you did such a great job. And it felt nice, I can't lie, but here's also the truth. I knew they were lying to my face because I didn't do a good job. But I remember getting to my car and I remember sitting in my car and it was a cold Saturday morning, so I was sitting there waiting for the car to warm up. And I can remember looking up at myself in the rearview mirror and waiting for that inner critic to kick in like it always did about, you know, you're terrible, you're not enough. But it, he didn't show up that day. And I had this feeling that started to come over me that was a very foreign feeling for me. I'd never, I'd very rarely felt these feelings in that first year but I, I identified them as, as confidence. I actually started to feel like confident and excited. And I had this thought come over me that was so crazy. I remember thinking, I wanna do that again. 
And I don't know if any of you have ever experienced this where you face this fear, this thing that was so gripping and debilitating, you finally put yourself out there, you realize that you could do it, and you immediately had this urge to want to do it again. And that's where I was. And what I am here to share with you is that one act of courage. Now, granted, the courage came in the form of my friend's two hands shoving me to the front of the room, but I'm going to call it courage for what it was. But that one act of courageous action opened up something inside of me that I never knew was there. And what I, when I look back on this today, and, and it wasn't an overnight success by any means. It was a series of me facing that fear over and over. But here's what happened. Every time I faced that fear and I took action, I learned something. I grew. I became more. And it was that process that made me into the person that I am today. And when I look back today, here's what I'm really clear on. That feeling that I was experiencing was not of one of me dying. It was the feeling of something inside of me so far greater being born. See, what I had not realized is one of my biggest fears my entire life was actually a reflection of one of the greatest gifts that God had given me. That I had a gift inside of me to inspire people through my words and my story. But I had been running from fear my whole life. I never even knew it was there. Thank you, Alex. And, and it's almost like I Thank shudder God. to think today, to think about what if I never joined a network marketing business? I don't know whether I, whether I ever would have realized. This is the reason why I love this profession so much is because what it really is at the end of the day it is a vehicle to help us re become the person that we were created to be. And I am here to tell you that person is so much bigger than any one of you can realize. There is greatness inside of you. The things that you fear in your life, you fear them for a reason. If you fear being a leader, I promise you, you were created, you were uniquely created to lead others in only a way that you can. If you fear, fear public speaking, just like I did, you may not believe this right now, but someday if you can just keep pushing, you are going to inspire people with your story. But the problem is some of you are just in the beginning of your story. Some of you are just starting out. And, 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 and I don't know if any of you are like movie buffs like me or love reading a good book. But how's every movie or how's every book start off? It starts off with tragedy, right? It starts off with everything going wrong. And I just think back, what if in the middle of the first chapter of the story of my life, I gave up and stopped writing? And that's what I want to tell you. Do not stop writing your story. There are things that you're going to do in your life that are so much more than what you can imagine. And this business... This, this vehicle that you have is, is, is the thing that's going to help you do that. This is the reason why I love this profession so much, because of what it allows us to do. It allows us to make an impact in the lives of other people. This is much more than just selling jewelry. And look, you guys got some great stuff. Obviously, you've built an amazing company. But what you're offering people is something so much more than just jewelry or an opportunity to make extra money. You're offering them hope. You're offering them belief in themselves. You're offering them love. You're offering them the ability to transform their life. Start thinking bigger. Start viewing what you do, not just as a job. This is a calling. This is something that will help you build a legacy for your life. The problem with our profession today is we're so focused on just making money and what we can get, we've lost sight of what this is really about. And if you can get back in tune with that, and if you can tap into that, that deeper meaning, it will change your business and it will help you change your life. But here's the last thing I'll share with you. And you guys already know this. Your problem is not one of knowledge. You do not have a knowledge problem. You already have more information in your head and in your notebooks than you need. 
Your problem is an execution problem. And what you need to do is you need to just get back to the basics, keep things simple, start taking action, start looking at fear and failure a different way. And you want to know what? If you don't have what you want today, here's the reason why. You're not good enough. Now, you might be, well, wait a minute. Well, think about it. If you were good enough, you'd already have what you want, but you don't. Now, not being good enough does not mean that you are not worthy or deserving, every one of you. There is not one of you that is more deserving or worthy than the next. But you want to know why you're not good enough? Because you haven't failed enough. Because you haven't tried enough. And therein lies the catch-22 of this whole thing, we just got to be willing to fall in love with the process. Start, stop focusing so much on the result, thinking the result's going to bring you what you want. It's not. Ask anybody that's reached the top levels of success. Tish will tell you, if you think hitting the top rank is going to make you feel happy and worthy and good enough, you are in for a awakening, a sore lesson in life. The process is the thing that will bring you the joy. And if we can fall in love with the process, if we can fall in love with the person we are becoming, that's the key to unlocking what you want. So Tish, I'll kick it back over to you. And um, if there's anything else you'd like to have me share, I'm happy to do that. Bob, that was amazing. Um, I think everybody would love another hour or two. Just kidding. We won't do that to you. <laughs> but would you be open if there were maybe two or three or four questions? Would you be open to answering them? Yeah, we take a couple questions. Okay, awesome. Does anybody have a question? If you do, please unmute yourself. I could ask you questions all night, but I'm going to let the others take them. Anyone? Well, while we'll see if someone else is. Oh, Hello. Yes. This is Kristen. I have a question. Hi, Kristen. Hey, How Kristen. Are you? Hey, Bob. Um, okay, so when so you talk about leading from the front, and you talk about um, like feeling the faith instead of the fear, and and doing that on your own. How do you take that from doing it on your own and then spread that to everybody else? Also, your to your downline. Yeah. A great question. Well, I think, you know, the first, um, the first part is you've already shared it. You need to, you need to model it to them, right? You know, teaching is really modeling and, and that's, you do that through your own example. And I think what you'll find is this. So I think there's a, I think there's a, there's a more important point I'd like to address that's kind of hidden in your question that as you model what it means to be a great leader, what winds up will happen is this, as your team grows, you will have a small segment of people that follow that example and take action. And I don't care how big your team is, here's what you'll find. There's, all, there's never gonna be any more than a very small percentage of your team that at any point in time is truly committed to their own success. And we measure commitment not by words, but by action. Success it, at the end of, of the day is not accumulations, accumulation of intent, it's accumulation of action. You can intend to do well, but if you don't take action, you're not going to be successful. So what we have to do as leaders is we have to wait, pay attention to the people that are demonstrating through action that they are committed and focus our time, the majority of our time, on those people. Now, does that mean that everyone else on your team is just a waste and we just let them be? No, by no means, because timing has a lot to do with it. You know, sometimes people, it's just not the right season of their life for them to commit. So the way that I always approach my business is I always led from the front. I never asked my team to do something that I wasn't willing to do. That means I was always out there personally recruiting, sponsoring, getting customers, there are times when I did that more or less based off of what I had happening. But what I learned to do is I learned to focus my personal time and attention on the people that were on my team that didn't need my time, but that deserved my time. This is a very, very difficult lesson of leadership because a lot of us 
we get into a business like this because we want to help people and we form relationships with our team. But it is our desire to want to help people that sometimes we wind up hurting them through enabling their behavior. We wind up becoming um, counselors to people, right? We wind up doing these you know, coaching calls every week with people that never do anything. And they're great people and we love them. But at the end of the day, we have to ask ourselves that our most valuable resource is our time. And every minute we give to someone else that's not committed, it doesn't make them a bad person. It means we're robbing that minute from someone else that needs our time. Now, here's the problem or that deserves it. The people that deserve your time will very rarely ask for your time because they're usually your best people. But I can promise you most leaders in this profession, we, won't, we don't talk about this a lot, but leadership is a very lonely place to be. The higher you go in success, the lonelier it is because you feel as though you have less and less people that you can counsel and talk to. And every single one of us has a tendency through inertia to take our foot off the gas, not do what we know we need to do, not push ourselves hard enough. So as a leader, if you can learn to always focus the majority of your time working with and pouring into your best people, that will serve you very well. Now, how do you treat everyone else? Well, everyone else you work with in a way where you've got to be strategic. If you have people that you personally sponsor frontline, you obviously have a responsibility to help them. But I, and it took me years to, to realize this, and I'll, I'll share this with you now. It is not your job to make people successful. I drove myself crazy and I created a miserable existence for myself in my business trying to make people successful. That is not the way that this works. You cannot make someone do something that they themselves don't want to do. So the secret is this. Look for people that are motivated themselves, right? Now, the trick is this. We need to create a culture on our team where everyone feels loved and appreciated and welcomed because we don't want to make someone feel wrong just because they don't have big goals or at least what we deem to be the big goals because who am I to say what's right for you in your life? So we make everyone feel welcome and appreciated and loved and we leave the door open for them. But behind the scenes, we're looking at working with people that are demonstrating to us through action and commitment. And what'll happen is over time, that will change for people. One of the things, Kristen, you might do, teach them what we're talking about here tonight, right? Challenge, look, as leaders, we have to be willing to challenge people. You know, I think that one of the, you know, one of the, the, the I teach a, um, I created this thing that we call the legacy leader movement. And legacy leadership is a totally different mindset when it comes to building a business like this. And it's based on this simple premise of putting love at the center of your business. And that means you lead from a position of love. And when we hear love, people are like, oh, I do that. I mean, I'm, I've got great relationships with my team. Well, there's another component to love that most of us fail at when it comes to leadership. Love is not the way you feel towards people. It's the way you act towards them. And leading with love means that you are willing to challenge people, to hold them accountable, to call them out when you know they need to be, to set boundaries, right? All the stuff that, you know, the icky stuff that we shy away from because it's like the tough love. Because we hold this false belief, I'm, I'm going to go back to beliefs again, that if we do that to people, that we're going to damage our relationship with them and push them away, where it's actually the exact opposite. You know, I have a, um, a two-year-old son. It's our first child. His name is Grayson. And I'm learning this lesson now that, you know, on almost a minute-by-minute -minute basis every day, I'm having to, um, to dis, you know, to tell him, don't do that. Show him that tough love. And, and I'm, I'm willing to do that. I have a responsibility to do that because I'm his father. And I know that every single time he does something wrong, it's an opportunity for me to help him develop his character and stay on the path of, a, of creating the life that he would want. But we don't look at our teams that way. We say we love our teams, but we're not willing to step into that part of leadership. And that's a major limiting factor. So what I'm saying, Kristen, is sometimes you got to be willing to have tough conversations with people and call them out. But you do it from a loving place. And, and sometimes it's not going to go the way that you want, and that's okay. 
but sometimes it will. Sometimes people will start showing up for themselves when you start showing up for them. Maybe they never had anyone in their life to point out to them that they're the reason why things are not going the way that they want. So all of that stuff, and that's probably the literally the longest answer ever to a simple question, but you know, all of that kind of in my mind falls under the same umbrella of leadership. I agree with you, Bob. Um, Nance, did you have a question? Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, I don't have a question, actually. I just wanted to very quickly thank, thank you, Bob, for, first of all, replying to my IM. That was pretty amazing. And actually, that created a little lesson in our Facebook group. Like, sometimes you just need to ask, and you never know. That's and right. we have you. Well, you know what I, you know how I say that, Nancy? Always assume positive intent. Awesome. Always yeah, assume positive intent. That's faith, right? Just assume it's going to go the right way. If it doesn't, yes. who cares? You if know? I can ask, if I can ask you to come speak to our team, then I can ask a lot of people, a lot of things. That's right. <laughs> but I just want to say thank you. And it was even more amazing than I thought it would be. Um, I, I mean, I knew it was going to be amazing, but it was even above and beyond. And I know we're going to be talking about it in a little bit. And I also want to let anybody know on the call, and anybody that's going to watch this recording that uh, Bob's Legacy Leadership Academy is worth every penny and more. Uh, it's amazing. Um, truly amazing. I appreciate so, you saying all. that. Thank you. And we that's will, we will be, um, we will be, we will be opening up enrollment again in October. So <laughs> if anybody's interested, they can um, just go to legacyleadershipacademy.com and you can join the wait list there. Um, and you'll be one of the first to know when we do open up. So. Was there anybody else have a question that we could post? About? I have one, Tish. Yes. Now. Hey. Um, so, I, Bob, I wanted to ask kind of like something a little bit, um, a little bit more personal. So, just to be completely transparent, because I really want to know what your thoughts are on this. Yeah, sure. Um, you but, got me nervous so, now. <laughs> no, I just was going to ask, so what would your advice be? Like, how do you keep pushing when you've had something in your life that has really shaken your confidence mm. and you're doing the actions and you're doing the things, but on the inside, you, you feel like you're kind of acting like what you're doing is like a fraction of what you're capable of. Mm. And so you're, you're putting yourself out there, but how do you keep going when you've had something that really has shaken you to the core? Mm. So great question, by the way. And um, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to answer and I'm sorry, say, tell me your name again. Danielle. Danielle. Okay. Uh, Danielle, I'm going to answer your question a couple of ways. Um, you know, this is, this, <laughs> this is an issue of, this is a topic or an area that we do lots of coaching on. Um, I actually just did a podcast episode last week where we published three of our live coaching sessions that we did inside of our academy that two of the people had this exact same issue. So I'm sharing that with you because I want you to be able to have something that you can go back to to kind of like reinforce what I'm about to share with you. But um, my, my podcast can be found on my website, which I'll put in the chat here. Um, it's just yourvirtualupline.com. And uh, it was the most recent episode from last week. It'll, it'll just say live coaching. And, and it's on how to change your negative thoughts. So I hear you say that you feel as though you are taking nece the necessary action? Yes. Okay. But why, in your mind, why do you feel as though if you're taking the action, you're not getting the results? I... <laughs> So I feel like it's because like on the inside, like my confidence is shaken. And so it's like, I'm, I'm going through the motions. Yeah. I'm trying to push myself and doing things I don't really want to do Yeah. because I know I need to, but yeah. you know, in the past I've had a lot more excitement and just a lot more, I just feel like a, a fraction of myself. Like I, like I said. Yeah. So what is the, what is the, what is the feeling that you have when you're in this kind of space of, of that we're talking about here? Can you identify what the feeling is that you have? I think it kind of goes back to like what you were sharing before of just, um, I wrote down what you said about the negative thoughts um, and just feeling like 
I feel like I've come from a place where, you know, I've been successful and I've had, you know, some challenges professionally. And it's almost like, I kind of, I'm like, uh, okay, yeah, I know I need to do this, but do they really want to listen mm. to what I have to say? Do they w really want to, can I really put myself out there again? Yep. Um, kind of thing. Okay. So this is a, this is a good example of what I was talking about. So what you'll, what you'll hear me go through in a little bit more detail in that podcast episode, I think it's episode 114. Um, I teach something that I call the formula for transformation. And basically what it is, is it's a, it's a, it's a process to help you um, identify and change your negative thinking and beliefs. And I've, I've hinted at it already, but the way that it works is um, we have our circumstances, which are the things that are fact in our life. They're the reality of our life. And we have thoughts about those circumstances. So if I, what I hear you saying is that you've had some recent challenges in your professional life that have maybe shaken your confidence a little bit? Yes. Okay. So you, so your circumstances, you've had these things happen in your life, right? I mean, it, that it's undeniable. That's what it is. What can you identify what some of the thoughts that you are having that are as a result of those circumstances that are creating this kind of negative domino effect for you? So like when you're getting ready to prospect, what are some of the thoughts that you're having that are holding you back? Yeah, that's a good one. I would say um, just kind of doubting, like, do I really know, you know, what to say? Um, how is this person, you know, going to respond? And, you know, I, I, I do the things that I need to do. So I reach out and, you know, I keep track of those things and stuff like that. I guess it's just the, that, just that feeling of, I don't know. Like, I well, how long I have you, how long like have you been, how long have you been, in, how long have you been in the business for? Um, in network marketing, I've been for a couple of years. Okay. So yeah. when you tell me, when you tell me you don't know what to say, do you really believe that? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. So, so let's get clear on what's really playing out here. What is the, what is, are you reaching out or are you not reaching out enough? I would say probably not enough. Okay. All right. So you see what's happening here, right? This is what we all do. I'm not picking on you. I'm, and this is a great example. We build this story. We create this story about what's happening in our business. That's not, it's, it's just all that it's a story, right? So we start kind of peeling back the layers here. And what, you know, what we find is that, you know, first thing you told me is that you are doing enough. And now you're telling me that you're probably not. So wh which one do you think is more accurate? <laughs> that I'm probably not doing enough. Okay, cool. Awesome. Thank you for that honesty. And so when you're, when you're faced with this kind of uh, opportunity, let's say to reach out to someone and you're not doing it, can you put yourself in that space and identify what a thought that you might be thinking that's keeping you from doing that? I'll kind of help, I'll help you coach you through this. Cause I'm, I'm putting okay, you on the sure. spot by the way. So I, I appreciate Nor, normally when I do this, we've had people that have gone through the training already. So I appreciate you being, you know, willing to do sure. this, but so it's not so much, what's the worst thing that can happen if you reach out to someone? I, well, I probably, what I would perceive is like getting blocked and, and losing that, perceived relationship that I had with that person. Okay. So, so you have maybe this thought or belief that you could damage relationships with people by reaching out to them if they're not interested? Sure. Okay. So let's look at that. Let's examine that. Do you have factual proof of that? Has that happened before? <laughs> not that I know of. <laughs> okay. So you've been doing this for four years. You've not yet damaged a relationship, but yet you have a thought that I don't want to damage a relationship. And when you have that thought, how's that make you feel? Mm. So you're sitting there. Well, I, I guess I'm kind of scared. Me. Right. Scared, maybe doubtful. Yeah. And when you're feeling scared and doubtful, what do you do? Um, you do nothing. Yeah. 
And when you do nothing, when you do nothing every day, what do you get? Nothing. More of what you got, right? Yeah. So, so let, let's, let's go back to the original source here. Is, is, it, is it your circumstances? Is it the fact that you went through challenges? Is that, is that what is holding you back in your business? Or is it you're thinking about what you're doing? I guess it's the, the mental piece of it. Yeah. Is there maybe, is there maybe a belief there? Is, is there maybe a belief there that it's your job to create the result that you want? That like, have you ever had the thought that I don't want to screw it up? Mm -hmm. So that's, mm -hmm. start, that's having a thought or belief that you're the one that makes people interested. Do you believe that to mm -hmm. be true? Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. Do you, you do believe that to be true, that it's your job to make someone interested? No, I feel like that's the pressure that I put on myself, I guess. Yeah. Oh, we all do. Yeah. Trust me. Yeah. We, I, and I mentioned that because this is what I coach the people through is we, we, have, we also have this other thought that I can't screw it up. I got to say the right thing. I got to make them interested. And that causes fear and that causes doubt and we do nothing. But if we can look at that, is it really our job to make someone interested or is it just our job to share and they're either in a place where they're going to be interested or they're not? I mean, you've been around long enough to know that, right? Right. And then the other thing that I'll, and I'm, I'm just giving you some things to think about. I, I can almost promise you that you're making the mistake that I did for a long time where you're looking for, you're attaching your own self-worth to the yeses and the nos. Mm -hmm. 100%. <laughs> and, and so if we look at the fact, if somebody says no, are they saying no to you? Or are they saying no to what you're offering them? No to what I'm offering and just really just right now, not even no forever. Yeah. Does it really have anything to do with you at all? No. But isn't it interesting how in our kind of egocentric, selfish nature that we all fall into, that we make it all about ourselves. Yeah. You know, the funny thing is, it's like we build up these, this, these scenarios of like reaching out to people and it takes us months to even do it. And we have all these stories and things that, and we finally do it. Somebody tells us no, and they literally never even think about us again five minutes later. because all they're really worried about is themselves. So, so what I'm trying to kind of coach you through and help you with here is, is coming, you know, making the decision, this is, are these, Danielle, are these thoughts, are they serving you in terms of you reaching your goals? Definitely not. <laughs> right. So then you have a responsibility to, to begin to choose a different set of thoughts. So what's a, what's a thought that you could think when it comes to, or what, what's, a, what's a thought, or sometimes it's easier for us to identify feeling, sometimes thought. What's a thought or a feeling that if you did have would help you take action or one that would serve you to reach your goals? I've given you some already. Yeah, no, I think that, I think the thoughts that, motivate me the most is that I have good things to share that I can help people. It's not about you. Success. Yeah. <laughs> it's not your job to create the results. Mm -hmm. yep. You just have a responsibility to share. No, doesn't mean that you're any less and maybe go back to what I taught you earlier. Maybe the fact that you're stuck is because you're not approaching failure in the nose with a healthy attitude. Mm -hmm. Look, it's only natural, right? You go through challenging times, you get down, right? It's tough. But what winds up happening is we create this negative pattern of thinking that starts to change our actions, which just keeps creating more of what we don't want. And if we can start thinking differently, if we can consciously start to examine our thoughts. And here's the big thing I'm teaching you how to do here is understand that you are not your thoughts, Danielle. You are the thinker of your thoughts. If you think a negative thought, it does not make you a negative person. It makes you a human being. 
If you think a sad thought, it does not make you a sad person. It makes you human. See, the problem is not the thoughts. The problem is the, the thoughts that we choose to believe. So what I want you to start doing is I want you to start learning how to be responsible for your thoughts, right? Church, Winston Churchill mm -hmm. said the price of greatness is responsibility. That starts with your thinking. You want to lead a purposeful life, you have to start thinking on purpose. You create a purposeful life through purposeful thinking. So if you start paying attention to this, and by the way, here's the good news. Just the fact that you are aware of this right now, you are now ahead of 99% of other people on this planet. Because most people do this stuff completely unconsciously without knowing. Now, it doesn't mean that it's going to be simple to fix, but you've got the ability to fix it. And so what I want you to start doing is I want you to start managing your thinking. I want you to start asking yourself, what are the thoughts that I need to be thinking on a daily basis to create the feelings that I want to drive me to take action, to start to create different and better results. And here's the beauty of this. Danielle, the evidence of your future lies in your thinking of today. If you can start changing your thinking, you are literally already beginning to create a different and a better future for yourself. And you have, you have the ability to do that, don't you? Yes. So I want you to stop looking at your circumstances as the thing that's controlling you. They're not. What happened is, is in the past. You can't change it. Our attachment and our, our desire to try to change the past is the very thing that keeps us stuck and creating the past over and over again. Let go of the past. Step into the present. Get rid of fear. Feel that love in your heart, right? Because that's love is the, is the uh, opposite of fear. Fear is the absence of love. Feel love in your heart for another person. Focus on them and what they need. Focus on service. Switch from a sales mindset to a service mindset. And if, you, if these are the things that are in your head and that are driving you every day, you'll be amazed at how you start to show up. But the way that you do it is just by small little actions, little things every day. Forget about how far you have to go because fear is going to make you think too big. Yeah, but Bob, look how far I have to go. Look, success is created by thinking small. Habits change your life. What are you doing? Change your thinking. Change what you do. Over time, that will change your life. Is that helpful? Thank you. That awesome. Thank you so, so much. So go listen to that podcast episode because I give that same line of coaching a couple of different ways to three different people. And I think it'll be really good for you because you're going to need to hear that a lot more. And, um, and for, by the way, for any of you that, that are like, you know, I need that kind of stuff. Um, the first thing that we do with all of our new students that join our program, we take them through uh, that mindset coaching piece to help you identify your negative thinking and kind of start to change your beliefs about yourself. So, Thank you, Bob. You're so, welcome. This has been incredible. And for the, all of you that join the call, after we end this, I'm going to start a thread in our group page and I want everybody to share some of your ahas or favorite tips that Bob shared and I'll, I'll send some sparkly surprises to a few of you. So this has been so wonderful, an incredible way to spend an evening together. So thank you, Bob, again. Yeah. Thanks everybody. Have a great night. Take thank care. You.